Greetings, YouTubers. So, <laughs> this is a question that in um, my early days of thinking about this lifestyle, this was a question that I had, but I, I didn't see an awful lot of content out there. There's some. Bob Wells was pretty good at co about covering it, and, and a few others, but, you know, um, you know, people get a little squeamish about this, but it's a question you have to answer. So, what do you do for bathroom facilities? Okay, well, this is this is my potty. This is a um, a five gallon bucket, and uh, it is a um, luggable loo. It came with the bucket, and uh, there's a seat here that I'll show you in a little bit uh, for. Under 20 bucks, 19.95, something like that, plus tax, probably 21 dollars out the door. Got it at uh, Cabela's, pretty fair price. And then um, what I've done is I built this box out of pine and, and uh, cut a hole in the top to fit the five-gallon bucket. And the five-gallon bucket slips inside. And the reason that I didn't use just the bucket is that in quartzite, when we first launched. Um, <clears throat> All we had was the bucket. We didn't have this pine box. And the bucket was a little bit unstable, so when you were sitting on it, it tended to want to rock, so you had to just kind of be careful. So I, um, I would prefer not to be able to have to divide my concentration. <laughs> um, I'm blushing right now. Um, uh, and uh, so what I did was I built this pine box, and the bucket fits inside that hole, and it's uh, extremely stable. Um, it also lifts it about an inch or two off the ground, uh, which I like for me. Um, but, uh, you know, that's a, a personal choice. Um, and it's just a simple pine box. I, I You know, I built it out of uh, one by fours, I think. And, um, you know, just glued it and screwed it in my ever-popular ever Gorilla Glue. And... Um, the added advantage is this box is not nailed down in here. I mean, it's it's not fixed to the to the trailer at all. I can take this box out. Um, I use the area for other storage, tripod for my telescope, the broom, the staff of Shadow Falls, and um, I keep my guitar in here. And, and uh, some other things, some bags, and some cedar chips. I'll get back to these in a little bit. So, uh, what I'm going to do is put a bag. I have a 13-gallon simple trash bag. It doesn't have tie strings. It's uh, your basic twist wrap variety of bag. And I'm going to put that inside the bucket here. So, I'm going to put the camera down, and we'll be back in a second. Okay. So, I've uh, placed um, the 13-gallon uh, trash bag. Uh, inside the bucket, just wrapped it over the edges here. I'm going to lose subscribers over this. I just know it. <laughs> I've already lost one since yesterday with my uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. Oh, anyway. Um, so the the I put in two bags. This is the first bag, um, and it's I just pushed it in. And one thing that I've found to be important is around the walls here is to make sure that you push the plastic flat against the wall um, without getting too descriptive. What you don't want are ledges that are hanging out um, inside the bucket. So, all right, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I've got another 13 gallon bag. I'm using these uh, hefty, ultra strong, and I have some, a couple of backup boxes. And um, so I put another bag inside. So I'm back. I'm double bagging this. Queso. I'm going to put this bag in. Queso. Queso dia. Um, sorry, I digress. Let me put this bag in, and then I'll be back in just a second. Okay. So I've got the uh, the second bag in. It's kind of hard to see because it's it's black. But again, you know, I've I've made sure that the bag is you know as close to the walls of the bucket as I can get it. And um, I've chosen, actually, I didn't have a preference. This was uh, a preference uh, when Rachel was still traveling with me. This was a preference that she expressed. And, and I, I think it's probably 
I, I understand her preference, but she prefers the black bags because it hides the contents a little bit better. And I, and I, I totally get that. So that's why we've chosen the black. But, you know, a white bag will work. In fact, I put the white bag on the outside. I don't know. For me, the white just looks a little more sanitary, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why I have a white. I think it was probably because they were in a roll of like 80 for a dollar or something like that. They were cheap. And they're just twist tie. You know, they don't have the uh, the little pull strap ones like the black bag does. Okay, so once I get the bag, bags in, uh, what I've also got is a bag of this Kennel Care Red Cedar Bedding. I get this in the pet department at Walmart. Um... So far, I've been able to find this in every Walmart that I've been to. The one comment I would make about that is that there's usually only one, maybe two bales of it. So it's always been there, but it's always only been like one or two of these. So they're, I'm having a little bit of concern that I might not be able to find this. Uh, what I have in my head as a backup is a kitty litter. In fact, I may go to a blend of kitty litter in this in this red cedar bedding. Uh, but so far, this has worked exceptionally well. Um, so what I'll do now that I have the bags in there is I'll, I'll grab a handful. And put two handfuls in the bottom. Okay. So that, that uh, is all I do. And this is ready for use. Well, I've got to put the, the seat on here, and I'll show you that in a second. And, um, <clears throat> in fact, let me do that now, and then we'll talk some more. Be okay, right here it is with the, uh, with the seat on it, and it's got a lid that closes up. And uh, I know that some folks, most folks, it seems like, in the, uh, in the uh, nomad community, van dweller community, um, separate liquid waste from solid waste. Um, I don't do that. Um, what I will do is this will get used for liquid waste and every time it is used for liquid waste another handful or two of the red cedar bedding will go on top and I'll just stack that. And then once it is used for solid waste what I'll do is, is I'll take out that black bag, so I'll pull the, the seat off, I'll take the black bag and I'll twist it up tight and tie a knot in it. I don't use the drawstring, I push all the air out of it as much as I can and then tie a knot in it, like, much like you would a balloon, and, um, and seal it off tight. And then the white bag that's in here, so you saw a white bag go in and then a black bag go in. The black bag, bag holds the contents of, of the waste. It gets tied into a knot, and it goes back into the white bag. Okay, hang on a second. We'll okay, be so right the back. other waste that I need to get rid of is, is trash. And these are um, bags that my groceries come in, and I, I save those. And I put all my trash, so my, my paper bowls, plates, forks, spoons, whatever, goes in here. And when it's full, I tie a knot in the top. I use these uh, two handles, and I just tie them into a knot and seal it off tight. And then I put the contents of into the same this bag. white bag that this black bag goes into. Does that sound more confusing than anything else you've ever heard? Probably. It sounded confusing to me. It's got to be confusing to you, and I know what I'm talking about. So the black bag inside here gets tied into a knot and goes in. Then the trash bag that's behind me over here gets tied into a knot and goes inside. And then the white bag that's on the outside of all of it gets tied into a knot and sealed. And that is what goes into a dumpster. So um, some of you are probably going, ew, at this point. Um, I know I did. Uh, but when you think about it, um, I don't know how many moms are out there. Um, and, um, you know, I've been a dad, and I've changed diapers. And uh, I put those diapers, you can't flush them, so where do they go? You got it. Into the trash. And that trash then goes into a dumpster, into a landfill somewhere. To me, this is no different. Um, the, the separation of liquid waste and solid waste to me was... Uh, it was 
it was an unappealing option. I've been using this process since uh, February 24th when Rachel and I launched um, this year, earlier this year, and I have yet to discern an offensive odor. It has been, it has worked really, really well. And I don't have to go through the trouble of separating things and and all of that, it, it works exceptionally well. And even when this has been sitting for um, a period of time uh, in hot weather, with this lid closed and me putting those red cedar chips on top, I have yet to discern an offensive odor come out of this, out of this device, out of this toilet. So for me, it works. Um, and I've been in temperatures in excess of 100 degrees uh, for days uh, with this, and it, and it works fine. And I've got all of this enclosed in um, in my little you know private restroom here. The best thing about this whole setup is look at that view. Uh, there aren't many bathrooms that I've been in that come with a view quite like this. Um, I mean, there's nobody out there, and um, I don't know. I like my potty. So that's, um, that's the unsavory truth about how nomads <laughs> handle their bathroom needs. Um, and I know that there's probably a number of videos out there, but this is just how I did it. I think, you know, there were a number of uh, subtle nuances, subtle differences in the way that I approach specifically, significantly the, uh, um, I, I don't separate um, materials, liquid from solids. So that's not something that you'll hear very often, but it works for me. So um, do with that what you like. Um, I talked about some alternatives for the um, Kennel Care uh, Redwood or Cedar Bedding. I'm thinking about maybe using um, some kitty litter. Um, and then I've also seen uh, pine chips, pine sawdust, pine, similar to this. Not quite as, uh, I mean, if you look at this material, it's, it's kind of coarse and... Um, and uh, the pine stuff was a little, little finer. But I'm thinking about getting uh, some, uh, some kitty litter and using that as a, as kind of a hybrid. You know, so use some of the red cedar and then some of the kitty litter. And the reason that I want to do that is that while this absorbs moisture um, pretty well, it doesn't do it as immediately as I think kitty litter will do. So I may try that. Um, and um, and see if that improves um, the performance of my of my bathroom. Um, although the performance has been really good up to this point, so I have no complaints. Um, another um, aspect that I wanted to mention about the um, the wooden box that my bucket uh, fits into, I, I said that the box um, comes out, and it does. It's not it's not attached to my trailer at any level. I can I can take that box out. So. Uh, those of you who are familiar with cat holing, um, cat holing is where, I mean, you're out in the wilderness, uh, you know, like backpackers, you, you, you don't pack a toilet with you typically. Um, so what you do is you, you have a small uh, backpacking shovel or some sort of digging device and you make a hole uh, six to eight inches deep and, um, you know, you deposit your waste inside that hole and then, and then bury it. Um, this box comes out of my bathroom and I can carry it out into, uh, you know, out into the wilderness. And um, if I don't want to, um, you know, bag my waste, I can uh, dig a cat hole and, uh, and bury it out there. Um, six to eight inches, probably no deeper than 12. Um, basically, you want to be deep enough to where you can cover the waste material, but not so deep that you get out of the... Um, the biome, can I call it that? There's a there's a layer of soil that typically has um, biological materials uh, that will break down the waste, and um, you don't want to go so deep that you get out of that 
uh, out of that zone and not so deep that it's not covered. So about six to eight inches. Eight inches is probably about right. And um, so that's cat holing. And my potty goes out there with me if I want to. So, all right. All right, so take that for what it's worth, and um, we'll catch you later.